Can we go ahead and get the proverbial cam question out of the way? If you guys decide if you're going to put Without a doubt. Here. What we're going to do is uh, Kyle will, Allen will start this week. Cam will continue his rehab program. I've got nothing further to add, guys. I, I can't tell you anything other than what I've already told you. Ron, is he discussing his options? I mean, that we've kind of heard Joe, a lot of talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know who's talking, yeah. but we're not talking. I know that much. So, I, guys, I can't answer anything other than add anything else to anything. Have a chance to meet with him this morning or speak with him? Okay. I don't have anything else to add on that. How did you come out Sunday with injuries? Really well. Um, as far as I know, and, and I haven't talked to RV, but I will after this, um, you know, from, from last night, uh, a couple of guys were nicked up, bumped up. Probably the most concerning one right now is James Bradbury with the groin. So we'll see how he is when I get a chance to talk to RV. Was that just cramping with James? or? Well, a little bit of something. We'll know a little bit more this morning. And Christian was under the tent a little bit. Yeah, like I said last it was an abundance of caution. You know, they, they, the, the upstairs guy called in, and so they, they took him in just to double check to make sure with the lead. And based on what they told me, I said, you know what, let's just be smart. And, and, and I really appreciated our doctors going through the process and giving me the information. Ron, if it ends up being somewhat serious for James, how much confidence in Ross versus maybe looking outside? No, I got a tremendous amount of confidence in Ross. I got a tremendous amount of confidence in, in JV and Elliott. I mean, both those guys have started games for us. Um, JV is our nickel, Ross is our corner, and we've won games with those guys in those positions. So I, I would have no, no issue with that, Joe. I feel very confident in what they, those guys have given us. Coach, you guys have had that open roster spot for a little bit. Are you just waiting for the right guy to come along, the right need? There are some things that we're discussing as far as that's concerned. And, 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 and you know, as Marty comes up with, uh, you know, the ideas and the plans we talk about, um, you know, and we are most certainly in that mode right now of just kind of looking for the right fit. Is there a particular position, position that you're looking for with that to fill us spot? Well, there's a couple of positions that we're talking about that, that, you know, we're looking at and feel we might need to, to, to fill, that's for sure. Ryan, when you were getting ready to make the decision on the, the, the fake punt and even the earlier um, fourth down play, did you have conversations with the analytics people in your head or, or in the no. speaker? Or do you use them? or how no, do you We do have analytics. What we do is we go through that during the week. A uh, decision I made on the first fourth down and fourth and two um, was that we practice that. We have, a, we have a fourth down session during the week. It's all part of our situational football. Norv had a play that, a couple of plays actually he's really comfortable with, and that was one. I thought it was a good, good spot, uh, especially in, in, in that point in the game when it was 3 nothing. I felt that if we could make a play, get a first down, um, you know, we had a chance to score a touchdown. If we, um, if we didn't, we had him backed up. So I just felt good at that point, and I thought we were playing pretty good defense at that point as well. As far as the punt was concerned, I just felt we needed a little momentum. You know, um, it, Sure, you know, we had a 10-point lead, um, but, you know, they they just gone down and scored on us, and, and that was disappointing to me. Um, but I just felt that, you know, that sometimes you can't measure those things with numbers. You know, there's a feel in the game, and it's just one of those times I just felt we had to do something. The interesting thing is I had a great conversation with Coach Norv on, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday about it. You know, we had talked about stuff like that, and, um, you know, and so that was in my mind more so than anything else. You know, and that really is one of the cool benefits of having somebody that's done it before, you know, on your staff because you can, you know, you can ask questions. And Coach and I had an opportunity to talk about that. How much do you use a, that analytic team then to make those decisions, I guess, earlier in the week on what you're going to do? Just depends on what the circumstances are. If the circumstances are, you know, things that I like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I still have to make the decision. It still fall backs on me. I mean, if, if, if you know, if, if analytics were so perfect, this league would be 8-8. Eight and eight. All you'd have to do is just follow the numbers, but it's not. This game's played by, you know, by humans, and and there's emotions involved. There's a, you know, there's um, the momentum. You know, things that you can't you can't put into numbers. You can't calculate those things. And so the analytics are, I think, I use as a guide. To be honest with you, and you know, I mean, during the season, I've i done it a couple other games where we punted, where we kicked a field goal when the numbers said you should go for it. You know, um, I did that in our first, uh, in our in our second game, I think it was, and it didn't work out so well. You know, so but that's just that's but the numbers are there for to to, to do those things, and uh, but I've used them where it's worked out very well. So it's just you know it's about a feel for the game. I guess part of that too comes 
with the pre-draft process and, and when you're kind of trying to evaluate upside of, of certain guys, mm -hmm. and specifically Dennis Daly, I mean, a lot of teams passed on him before you guys found him, and it seems like he's really living past the potential that a lot of people had on him early well, on. I can only talk about what we had on him, Jordan, and, and the biggest one was we sent Travell down there to work him out, and Travell worked him out and said, God, this guy's pretty good. You know, um, there's some things we, you know, he's raw at. And then when you look at his history, you see that, you know, here's a guy that, that transferred in there, and from the moment he'd been there, he had been their starting left tackle in the SEC and played pretty doggone well. Uh, we took the time to look at a lot of tape on him, and, and, and at the end of the day, we just felt that, you know, him sitting there, uh, with the need to <coughs> make sure we had enough offensive linemen, quality depth as far as that's concerned. Um, that's why we did what we did with him. Ron, coming up, is there anything you noticed about Kyle this week um, that you picked up on how he played coming off of you know his first loss and a game with a few interceptions? And um, like I've always told you, it doesn't seem like a lot of things phase him. And he, he, he had a good week of practice. He had a good week. You know, he's, he, It's not like he doesn't practice well. It's just he had a good week. And um, he just – just, I don't think it phased him. I really don't. It just, he looked confident out there uh, during practice, had a good week. Ron, um, do you think it's better or worse for you that the Packers got beat pretty convincingly? Can't tell you. Don't know their team well enough um, as far as their personality to see how they're going to react. I mean, I, I do like the way. You know they're portraying it that it was a humbling experience because we went through the same thing last week. So, but no matter how we look at it, we believe we're going to get their best. You know they they just got beat, so obviously they got to come out and give their best, and uh, so we've got to prepare for that. Uh, it's you know to be able to say that I you know you'd have to know the personalities. I know this, and and I do know Aaron Rodgers that he's going to come out and play. He'll play very well. For everything that's happened in the secondary this year with Dante missing some time, now James, it seems like Eric has sort of been a steadying force and we don't talk a lot about him. How well has he adapted to the system and in the locker room as well? Oh, he's adapted very well to what we do and how we do it. Um, and, and he's a smart football player, understands the game. I think he has developed tremendous rapport um, with Luke. Uh, the two of them communicate very well. Um, you know, him and Trey have, have, have – you know, they've developed that to where it's not necessarily have to be communicated as much as to be pointed to. You know, hey, you know, and you can see that um, he's got a good feel for the for, for, for the other guys, the guys up front, and the guys on the sides of him. You know, both corners. What's really cool about him too is is is, is he's fit very well into to, to the locker room. You know, the guys really appreciate who he is, his leadership, you know, his willingness to share certain things. You know, he's a very quiet leader. Um, but when he does say something, I think it is impactful. I think the guys listen. It also seems like he's learned when he can sort of pick his spots on the field and take some of those chances, like as you saw yesterday where he's wrapping around and he's saying, yep. yeah, this is when I can bounce it out. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting because he's, you know, he, he's got such a feel for the game and for what we do and how we do it. He's, he's been able to do that a couple of times where, you know, you sit there and go, oh, okay, I see it. Um, he's, he's got that ability. He's, he, he's a good football player. Right. Will you look for more opportunities? And I know it has to be in the right circumstance, but to give Christian a blow like you were able to at the end of yesterday. Um, I would think so, but you know, as he's shown, he's so valuable to, to us, to what we do. I know Norv has looked at some things and in, in, in creating some some other packages, some packages where he has both backs in there. Um, so again, those are just things that you know we we can do to try and you know take some of the burden off of him in terms of uh, rep count. You know, as Norv said, you really don't want to take the ball out of his hands as much as you want to limit other things that he has to do. So, um, you know, that's probably still in the works as far as Norv is concerned with the, with the game planning. Hey, Ron, when you were evaluating Travell to bring him in onto your staff, um, what kinds of things stood out to you about him? And I would imagine that part of it is finding someone who compliments Coach Matsko. Very much so. You, you do need that compliment. Um, but the one thing that I've always appreciated in that position, especially on the offensive line, is a former player. You know, we had Ray Brown, who was excellent, did such a fantastic job for us for all those years. And we brought, um, we brought Travell in on, under the, um, the Bill Walsh uh, Minority Internship Program and got a chance to really watch Travell and watch how he handled it. And he's so smart and understands the game that I always felt that if there's ever an opportunity, we'd like to bring him in and have him part of the staff. Well, we did the same thing with Everett Brown, 
you know, we did the same thing with Chase. You know, these are former players, guys that have a little bit of background in the game. You know, as I, t I tell those guys, each and every one of them, too, is, hey, you played the game. doesn't make you a better coach, but it gives you perspective that other coaches don't have because they didn't play it. Um, and I think that gives them a little bit of credibility. But what they do with it and how they do it, that's up to them. I mean, they've got to be credible. Once, you know, you have that, that helps. But until you, you show them that you know what you're doing, what you're talking about, um, you know, you're, you're, you're just a guy that played. And, and so we've been fortunate with the guys that we've brought in. Ron, you mentioned nothing really seems to phase Kyle. Do you think for him to get up here week after week, game after game, it makes it more complicated for him to have to answer questions about Cam Newton and another quarterback on the roster every time? I know it's us asking yeah, him. But. That's exactly it. it that, that's where it becomes complicated. I mean, the truth of the matter is if you didn't ask, it wouldn't be a bother. And I mean, I mean that. I mean, I give you an answer and tell you what it is, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not sure why it's continued being brought up. You know, it, every Monday I'd be happy to answer the opening question, answer the elephant in the room, and then move on. And I think, you know, for, for, for him, you know, he just he goes about it because it's asked. And that's the truth. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, you know, I know you guys have to do a job and try to get information, but I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you the truth, okay? I'm telling you what I know. I'm not going to get up here and make a story. If I'm going to tell you exactly what I know, Okay, and, and what these guys know is what, what I tell them. And to me, it's the truth. Has it become a distraction? Again, when the question is asked, it becomes a distraction, in my what opinion. No, the, 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 guys, the guys understand that they're going to play with who's here who's on the field. And it doesn't matter who's on the field. As long as that guy can help them win, they're going to do everything they can to help. I mean, that's just, that, that's just kind of the nature of, of, of playing the game, playing a team sport. You know, I said it yesterday, it, it doesn't matter who's on the field. It's the 11 guys got to work together. And, and in a lot of cases, we had that happen yesterday. I thought it was a very good game from that perspective. And when, when we gave up a play, it was because something broke down, whether it was protection, whether it was run blocking, whether it was run gap responsibility, or it was coverage, you know, or special teams, you know. That's the beauty of this. This is a team game, and when it happens, there's somebody responsible, and they're responsible for the other guys on the team. Ron, Dante came away with the interception, the fumble recovery. I know after last week you said you want to see him clean up some things. How yep. did you think he played? He played well, but still like to see him clean up some technique stuff. There's a couple things that, you know, if he's a little bit tighter in, in, in some of his techniques, he's got a chance to make a few more plays. A young man's, you know, an explosive player who's, who's got an ability to, to, to make plays. He plays with good vision, but at times he gets dirty eyes, so he's got to make sure he's focusing on the right thing and seeing the things that he's supposed to. Um, he has, I think, an opportunity to be a really good one in this league, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a tremendous talent. Coach, how would you evaluate Greg Dorch's debut yesterday? I thought it was good. I thought he made some good decisions. Um, you know, he, um, he, he's, he's, as I said before, I think he's a dynamic returner. And, and again, he, he, he did some really nice things, created some good field position for us, one on a punt return and one on a kickoff return. Um, so that's important. You know, if you can get, if you can get a punt return, at or around 10 yards or more, you know, you've taken one less for, uh, first down. You got to create an offense. So he's done a nice job already, um, and we'll see how he goes as we go, we go into next week. You see Brian Burns getting more comfortable following that wrist procedure. Yes and no. There were a couple times that, you know, you you see some really good things from him, and then uh, other times you do see him favorite. And, and again, it's just gonna, he's going to have to have confidence in it. Um, this week he played a few more plays, I think, than we really wanted him to play. Um, but, you know, with the unfortunate cir circumstances for Mario and with Christian Miller down, you know, we, we only had three outside backers up. So we ended up playing a few more plays, I think, than I would have really wanted him to play. Um, and, and you saw it. You know, I saw it a couple times. So he's just going to continue to work through it. You know, he's, he's, he's a tough kid he's, who, who plays hard, gives you everything he's got. And uh, this is, you know, one of those learning experiences and learning how to play with, with pain. Speaking of Mario, have you spoken to him? Just by text messages, he's, he's here. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to say hello and see how he's hanging. Ron, it's a little bit of a broader question, but midseason, are there any guys in particular who stand out to you as, as they surprised you with their performance so far through midway or, or just things in general about the team that really stand out to you at the midway point? No, I, I think we're still growing and learning. I mean, you know, again, you know, you look at the games we've won and, and I've come away saying we could have done this better or that better. Um, Never really felt like we've, we've played a game where you could sit there and say, oh, you know, that, 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 that grades out as a very, very, very high grade. No, that grades out as a good grade, but these are things we got to clean up. And when you have a list of those things, then you know you're, you're progressing in the right, the right direction. And, 
you know, that's one of the things you got to be careful of. You haven't arrived. You know, the only time you arrive is at the end of the year when, you know, when you're the ones holding up the trophy. So, you know, we have a ways to go. We feel very good about who we are. Uh, we like the guys we have. You know, we'll continue to play the guys that, 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 that are healthy and ready to roll. Uh, back to Mario. Kyle uh, brought out uh, Mario's jersey before the game. And I know it's a really tight group of D linemen and, and backers, but does something like that even galvanize the entire room a little bit more? It does, you know, and, and, and I think um, some of the things that, that happened pregame were, were, were indicative of, of, of who this football team is and, and how they care about each other and how they care about the group of guys. And, and, and I thought that was really touching. I didn't know Kyle was going to do it, and, and, and then I saw him doing it, and I thought that was – I really did thought that was really appropriate. I mean, he's – Myra's been a big part of, of what we've done, a big part of the success we've had since uh, I've been here. Uh, since he's been here. So we've been very fortunate to have a young man like that on our football team. Right. How do you explain your success against the AFC South when it's a division you hardly ever see? And that's probably a big part of it, Joe, is that, you know, that, that they, don't, they don't know us as well as some of the other teams know us. Um, and so I think sometimes that plays into it. Um, it's just one of those things. You know, certain divisions you, you, you play well against, some ones you don't play as well, sometimes you split. And, um, you know, if, if, uh, if we can have that kind of success, you know, then so be it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate All right. that. Thank you, guys.